Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Kovac Enterprises. This is going to be episode number two for our Atlantis Wild Nature series for the American Bison. Uh, in the previous video, we were talking about getting into uh, actually doing some putty work and the uh, seam work to try to uh, remove as much as we can uh, before we uh, paint this guy. So the actual tools that uh, I used for that occasion as far as the uh, doing the seam work and the actual putting uh, was a couple of metal files. Uh, I can show you one here. Uh, it's a little concave on one side of it. If you flip it around, you can see that. It's kind of, kind of rounded, I guess, or tapered, I guess. I guess we could say it. Um, so that's one of the uh, tools that I use for the middle filing. And then the other one is more of a rounded feature uh, to kind of go over any kind of curves in the model itself. So those were the two main ones that I used there. And as far as the putty work, we went ahead with the Vallejo uh, plastic putty. This is a series 401. And this is a water-based uh, putty. It comes out in white. And uh, of course, I have a little cup of water here that I use to kind of uh, wet the putty down so I can uh, uh, put it in the uh, creases of the uh, open gaps of some of the, uh, uh, of the model itself. So, I also kind of used the uh, point of the toothpick here to uh, dab a little bit of the uh, plastic putty on it. So if there's some little tight spots uh, or tight spots, uh, we can uh, dab that in there once we kind of water it down and it'll kind of flow into those uh, tight little areas. And then I'll let it set up and then I come back with the actual paper towel and uh, I wet the end down so that I could... Uh, remove any excess putty around the detail work of the uh, bison itself. So those were some of my steps that I used. And uh, with that being said, we can go ahead and bring in the head of the bison here. Uh, <clears throat> let me get my pointer here for you. And uh, I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not. But we did glue, uh, went ahead and glue on the ears on both sides as well as the horns once they were, uh, the seam lines were uh, kind of smoothed out a little bit. So these are permanently, uh, like I said, glued to the uh, parts of the head right now. You can see part of the white right here because um, there was a small little gap between the ear and the head itself. And uh, like I said, that was one of the techniques was using a small little uh, toothpick and dabbing a little bit on the end of the point and then just kind of dabbing the uh, Putty in there while it was still a little bit wet so it would flow into those gaps And once I had it all set in there and let it set for a couple minutes Then we went like I said with the uh, paper towel wetted paper towel and, and uh, kind of cleaned it up a little bit And like I said, this was all going to get painted over uh, later on you can also see here we did a little work on the middle of the seam line here so it kind of smoothed out all the edges uh, so if you run my thumb across it uh, there's no longer any uh, deviation it's pretty much smooth from one half to the other so that's our head of our bison so there's one side of it right there and of course here's the other side here as well all right, and uh, I also did the same thing with our little prairie dogs. Uh, of course, we uh, did a little of the filing cabinet, or filing cabinet, <laughs> how about the metal file? Uh, since we have some curves here, uh, this is where I used the rounded part here, and I just kind of smoothed the edges down here, and then uh, we washed them up and removed any dust from the uh, the mold process so he's pretty well smoothed out like I said once we get him all painted everything 
uh, hopefully uh, uh, the seam lines will kind of disappear on that. So that's one prairie dog. Here's the uh, second prairie dog, same thing, same principle with the uh, metal filing, smoothing down the seam line down the middle of them. So he's nice and smooth and uh, he should be ready for some paint. And like I said, try to be careful so that I didn't ruin any detail around his face features and the rest of his body. So there, there's the little guy where that's him. And of course you can see here in the uh, background here, we'll bring that in. I kind of did a little mock of putting the two halves together. Uh, like I can say it's not glued or anything, but uh, we went ahead and compositioned the tail where, you know, best place to put it. And uh, so that's that there. And uh, we can go ahead and kind of take it apart right now. <clears throat> So our two halves of our rear and our front, uh, you can see we have a small little gap right here. So you can see the white thin line here that we used the Vallejo putty. And uh, we just kind of ran that down a little bead and uh, let it set up a little bit. And then we came back and smoothed it all out. And uh, once that's done, like I said, once we get everything kind of painted and everything, hopefully that will disappear. And there's a couple like little areas right here on the underside where all the uh, the hair detail is. So that's there. Okay. So that's that for that one half. And then of course the uh, underside here of his underbelly. You can see here we had a little bit of a gap here, so we uh, put some uh, putty on there. So that's all like in there, nice and smooth. It's all set up and ready for paint. Uh, this half wasn't too bad. We didn't have too many gaps, so uh, we just ended up using the metal files to uh, smooth out all the seams. So there's the back end of that and that. So that, with that being said, we will go ahead and uh, continue with our build. There is one idea I had kind of running through my head. Uh, Back in the day, I did a Lost in Space with the One-Eyed Monster. Uh, and with him, I actually used uh, some cotton balls to represent the hair on his body by using some like Elmer's glue or whatever. And, uh, and then just kind of uh, ran some cotton, shredded a little bit to make it look uh, like hair on the creature itself. So my idea for the bison since the front half of him, even though it's detailed in the mold for like uh, all of his hair right here, I was thinking about uh, maybe doing the same thing with him by uh, uh, going ahead and putting some Elmer, Elmer glue and uh, some cotton uh, and uh, try to spread it out to make it look like it's uh, uh, hair around the whole front part of his head there as well as the um, first half of his body. You can see all this detail with the molded hair on there. But uh, in place of that, like the same thing, you know, uh, probably brush on some glue and then layer up on some of the cotton balls uh, and try to form to make it look like hair itself. And then go back once it's all set and spray, like say, uh, once I'm satisfied, spray it again with some uh, a mist of some uh, spray that's got the mixture ratio of the uh, glue and the water to kind of hold that uh, hair in place via the uh, cotton. And, uh, and then come back with some uh, uh, colors to represent the different colors of hair. Um, kind of make it a little bit more realistic. Um, I do have a jar which I'll bring kind of over in here. And uh, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, I kind of saved up some of this kind of cotton feature. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll end up like pulling it apart and uh, layering it on the uh, molded part of the, uh, uh, the hair on the uh, model itself and uh, see how it looks, you know. And... Uh, 
So that's kind of my thoughts and my ideas on that. Uh, you know, let me know what you think. Um, and uh, with that being said, uh, we'll uh, cut this video a little short. And uh, and uh, until the uh, next time, when we go for the next video for episode number three, uh, we'll pretty much have this guy uh, together, all glued up, and uh, we'll proceed on from there. So with that being said, I hope everybody has a good day, and uh, we will catch you on the uh, next installment. Until then, this is Callback Care and Prices, and we're signing off. So long.